Good evening and welcome again to the Marty Heiser Show. We've got an incredible show tonight, incredible. We have athletic illuminaries here. We have, we have a young man that is going to bring a championship hockey team right here to our beloved Danbury that you're going to meet. Not only that, but we have a state representative who's coming as we speak. He's screaming from the Capitol in Hartford, and he's going to come here and tell us how much all of our taxes are going to go up because when the Democrats talk about revenue, they really mean taxes going up. But enough about that. I want to start the show with something that caught my eye. Hopefully we can get a pic picture of this. This young man is a native of Bristol, Connecticut. He was involved in, uh, in um, uh, the war in Afghanistan where his Jeep that he was driving uh, had an, at a, at a, uh, and essentially had a bomb, an IED go off where he lost his leg. But it was his goal to uh, go back to, to his uh, battalion of Army Rangers that were in uh, Afghanistan at the time. He rehabilitated his leg. He was able to uh, uh, pass all the Army Ranger tests and go back and fight again. This young man is from Bristol, Connecticut. He's one of our own. And, you know, sometimes when I'm concerned about our country, what's the direction we're going, it's young men like this that catch my eye that are pretty impressive. A couple things that he had to do to come back. He had to, with an artificial leg, he had to be able to run five miles in under 40 minutes. He had to be able to hike 12 miles with a 40 pound rucksack in three hours. He had to parachute from aircraft and initially worrying about the wind shear might pull off his false leg. This young man is worth Joe Kapeski. Joe Kapeski, originally from Bristol, Connecticut, He's doing an incredible job out there, and Joe, I salute you and all of uh, all the men that are uh, fighting on our behalf for our freedoms and uh, that we so richly enjoy here in the United States. So thank you very much, and thank you to all the men out there that are fighting. Uh, we just cannot tell you how grateful we are, especially as our president tells us we may be beginning to wind down in Afghanistan and Iraq. Job well done. Not that it's over, but you know, like the Navy SEALs we had on a couple weeks ago, we did get the big guy, Bin Laden, and uh, I couldn't be happier about that. But enough about that. Our guest, our special guest, is the newly minted head coach and, what is it, Hockey Operations? What's Director of Hockey Operations. Director of Hockey, hockey Operations. It's Phil Esposito. Thank you so much for showing up tonight and telling us a little bit about the Danbury Whalers. Thank you, Marty. Um, you know, I've been reading some of the press cl clippings about it and so forth. What are you looking forward to? What kind of hockey are you looking forward to? And how are you saying uh, that you want to bring a championship to Danbury? Well, basically, we came uh, within, you know, one, one goal in overtime last year of getting to the finals. Mm -hmm. um, we, we had been shorthanded a couple of players in that last game five there against Brooklyn. And, um, had we not lost uh, a couple of the players that we, uh, you know, rely on, relied on um, relentlessly, mostly through the season, right. we lost those guys in Game Five, and we went into overtime with 13 players against the best team in the league, um, you know, and we, we we basically stayed with them the whole the whole game, and then you know we un got an unfortunate bounce and we lost in overtime, and then they went on to the the finals against the Aquasasni team and then lost in the uh, in the finals but um, we we believe that had we had won that game we would have a championship in Danbury right now because uh, you know we believe that we had a better team than the Aquasasni team uh, you know because we had we had played them all, you know all year long pretty good and we, and we had a pretty good record against them and we knew how to beat them but um, this year we got uh, we got a, a pretty solid uh, core of guys that are going to be returning, and um, we're going to change some things up that, that compared to what we did last year. And we're going to we're going to bring in a couple of uh, bigger and tougher kids, and we're going to play a little bit more uh, solid, um, tough, tougher uh, style of hockey. Something that Danbury is used to and, and that has had in the past. Yeah, I had the uh, the uh, the fortunate um, time that I, I spent a little bit with the Danbury. Uh, Trashers when they had first started here, right? Um, you know, I got to know Jimmy Galante really well, and I got to know his son, you know, uh, uh, AJ real well, and uh, and the coach that was here, Todd Sterling, was a uh, actually one of the one of the kids that I uh, I live with at prep school. Um, when we went to I went to the Salisbury School up in Litchfield, Connecticut. Yeah, now you you are a, oh sorry <laughs> you are a uh, a uh, Connecticut hockey program uh, veteran. Yeah, I came out of uh, East Haven Youth Hockey. I went to uh, East Haven High School for a short time, and then I left uh, high school and I uh, went into the uh, Salisbury Prep School. Uh -huh. um, and then after Salisbury, I went to West Point. 
Well, hold on one second. Caller, you're on the air. Hello. How are you? Thanks for calling in. We have the new, uh, well, he's not new to the fans of hockey in Danbury, but Phil Esposito is here, and he's the newly minted head coach of the Danbury Whalers. Do you have a question for him? No, but I have one for you. What happened to your voice? You have no, you have a technical difficulty down there. <laughs> okay. All right, well, I will speak louder. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, but you're not coming through the television. All right, all right. Well, thanks thanks for the update. Keep watching, though. Um, that's a friend of mine. He calls in periodically and says that the voice isn't right, but I'm pretty sure it is. But thanks for the call. All right, so now when you say you're bringing tough hockey to Danbury, this is, I mean, this team in Danbury, it originally started as the Trashers. Yes. And then it morphed into the Danbury... Mad Hatters. Well, yeah, it morphed into, after the Trashers, it turned to a, a team called the New England Stars, which I played for Okay. Um, up in Danbury for a season. And then it went to the uh, Danbury Mad Hatters, and then it went to the now Danbury Whalers for the last uh, last season, and we believe the next 10 to 15 seasons. Really? It's going to be it's going to be locked in in the Federal Hockey League? That's the, the one. Federal that's Hockey League is a very, very strong league. Uh -huh. um, it's a very, very solid single-A league now. Uh, with the ownership and the, and the teams that they've added and stuff and, and the places they've added, it's going to be another rival to the Southern Professional Hockey League, which has now been in business for a number of years. Okay. Um, and, and you it, played there as well? E I played a little bit there. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I made my rounds through Yeah, I was looking at. Places. I was looking at, the, as a matter of fact, for those of you at home, you want to have some fun, go on YouTube and just put in <laughs> Phil Esposito. And once you get past all the ones from that Boston Bruin who had a pretty good career himself. Yes, he did. Uh, any relation, uncle? No, I wish I was, because if I was, I wouldn't be here right now. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but uh, you get that, and then you go down and you see Phil Esposito, and this guy had an incredible pr playing career as well. Played his college hockey at Army, that's right, West Point. Then ha teams like the Hampton Road Admirals, the Knoxville Cherokees, the Jones, Joan, Johnstown's Chief, the Dayton Bombers, the Jacksonville Bullets. You had a long uh, time there. That was Jacksonville, Florida? Yes, I played in Jacksonville, Florida. And for that a was a league that you just talked about, yes. SUHL. Yeah, the Southern, Southern Hockey League, which is now the Southern Professional Hockey League. Uh -huh. I spent a lot of my time, though, in the East Coast Hockey League, which is a, a league above this. It's like a more like a triple, um, uh, double A right. level, and this is single A. So I spent a lot of my time in the East Coast Hockey League, which was a double-A level. Now, that was one of the things. You said that there were 12 players from the, the that have played on the Danbury Hatters that have sort of graduated to the East Coast Hockey League. Is yeah, last year we had 12 guys who got, you know, I have a lot of uh, influential uh, people that I met and I know over my years of playing hockey and mm -hmm. guys who are friends of mine who I played with who are now coaching up in those higher leagues and things like that and stuff, and they, they truly rely on my, um, my ability to – to decide whether or not a player is ready or not, and, right. th and every now and then they need a couple of players. Last year, and they called me, and I was, you know, instrumental in getting those players called up last year. And we had 12 of them last year, which was more than any team um, in the league. Uh -huh. And then also, um, two years ago, I coached the uh, Hudson Valley Bears in the yeah. Eastern Professional La Hockey League, and we had the most call-ups in that in that uh, in that league also too that I had, and we were in last place at the time, and I had the most call-ups. So, so now, so now, would you say? I mean, is that the average guy that's playing for the for the Danbury Whalers, and I've had a chance to get to know those. Al, I don't know if we have some of that footage, but uh, if we can roll some of the footage of some of the games that we've been at. But the average guy, I mean, if you look in their hockey database, you know, and you see where they played, all of them have had, you know, some uh, four-year college, you know, careers, not necessarily playing for, uh, you know, the um, Miami of Ohio or Colorado College or something like that, but they play on good college hockey teams, and then they go in, and then they have these careers in the minors. Are you sort of a way station for guys that have bigger hockey dreams, or, or what, what do you see uh, your role? It's kind of a kind of a give and take situation there. I mean, we got we got a lot of guys who just love to play hockey. Um, we have a lot of guys who who have the ability to probably move up, you know, and 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 when you get to a certain age. And you get to a certain skill level. It's not so much about your skill anymore. It's more about your will, your will to make it, and your will to, to determine you know w how far you want to go. And you have to put the time in. And you have to have the passion in order to get there. Yeah. And and that's what kind of where where, where the, some of the guys are stuck there. Some of the guys aren't. Some of the guys are going to finish up their career here. Um, you know, but it, it, you got to do you know you got to do it because once you hit to well once you hit like my age now you you just uh -huh. can't play anymore and then it's truly over. So <laughs> yeah yeah. 
So, I mean, but it's been really interesting. As I've, I've watched these teams, see these players come in, you've had some native Canadians that came through and, and skated here in Danbury. And there's one thing about the Danbury rink and the Danbury uh, team and the whole culture that comes along with the hockey program here is the attendance at these games and the enthusiasm. You even have fans that will travel to away games. I mean, it seems like... The enthusiasm for the Danbury Whalers and this hockey program just dwarfs all the other teams in the league. It, it does, and it, it's truly one of the best places to play minor hockey, minor, minor professional hockey around. I mean, I played to a lot of places. I played in Mobile, Alabama for a while, uh -huh. and, and that was kind of, it was, it was one of those places that you just never want to leave because, I mean, when I played down there, it was like you were playing in the National Hockey League because most of the people down in Alabama didn't really know the difference uh -huh, uh -huh. between the, what, what they were watching on TV and what they were watching at the Mobile Civic Center. Uh -huh. you know, but then you come to a place like Danbury and all these people are hockey knowledgeable. They're all people who, have, who know hockey. They're, they're, they're knowledgeable about the game. And uh, it's one of truly the only, the only pro teams in Connecticut where I think the actual people from Connecticut support it because we've had many hockey teams down in New Haven at yeah. the New Haven Coliseum. We've had baseball teams down in New Haven. We've had the Hartford Whalers, which you know, which are no longer here. Yeah. And they just, for some reason, people in Connecticut, a lot of the times they, they, they just don't put that emphasis around supporting it. Yeah. And then they wind up leaving, but that's not the case in Danbury. And that's one of the reasons why I feel that me being here now and, and I, I kind of have an obligation almost to bring a championship to Danbury. All right, so you're putting your marker down there. You're saying that anything, anything short of a championship uh, you're not gonna. You're not gonna stand for anything short of a championship. I'm the type of person that just sets my eyes on something, and I just keep going until I get there. Okay, caller, are you there? Yeah, how are you doing? Good, good, good. Do you have a question for uh, the coach? Yeah, just want to know. Uh, it seemed like last year the team um, <clears throat> didn't didn't really score with some of the other teams in the league. I just want to see what. You know, where, where do you see the scoring coming from this year? It's a good question. Thanks a lot. What about that? I would go to a lot of games, and, and uh, it seems like sometimes you scored more goals on the road than at home. I don't know if that was a, a pattern, but uh, where are we going to see our goals scored from uh, this coming season? Well, we're, well, you know, we have, we have a lot of talented players on their way back. Um, we're going to try and add a couple of... Uh, we're going to try and add a couple more, uh, more um, top-notch uh, players that are going to be able to, to score goals. And we're also going to have a couple of uh, dark horses, which are guys that kind of like played last year, probably didn't get a, a, enough ice time, didn't get enough chance to develop properly. And, and I believe that some of those guys that we have are going to be guys that we, we might be able to move into those roles. And we're going to, we're going to change up some, uh, some systems and things like that. We're going, to, you know, we're going to use some different four-check systems this year rather than just the, w the one we had last year for, for the time being. Um, and we're going to ch change some different things, and we're going to try uh, some other stuff. But you know, I, my philosophy is: is uh, I understand that goal scoring is 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 where you need to, to to win, but you only need one goal to score if you can keep most of them out of your net. If you can keep the other team to zero, you only need one to win. Okay. Are you going to go with that neutral zone uh, uh, trap? I mean, uh, the New Jersey uh, Devils won a couple Stanley Cups with that. They really did, and uh -huh. it worked for Tampa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. In this most recent Stanley Cup, for those of you who actually had the Vancouver Canucks, you had the Vancouver Canucks. I mean, people are excited about this hockey. <laughs> They're dropping stuff. But you had the Vancouver Canucks playing the Boston Bruins, and the Vancouver Canucks were like sort of the skill team. They had those Sedin brothers, and they were kind of, you know, vaguely European, afraid to go in the corners. But the Boston Bruins had the will versus the skill. And who ended up with the cup? It was Boston. And yeah. I've been on teams that have done that before. I won two national championships in in juniors in, in Vernon, British Columbia, when I played out in the BC Junior Hockey League, and we didn't have the best team. Uh -huh. We had just guys that were willing to 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 lay their bodies in, on the line during the playoffs, and they were they were they were the teams that were just willing to go through walls for the guy sitting next to them in the locker room, and, mm -hmm. and that's what wins championships. And I believe that we have a lot of those guys here. We have a lot of guys coming back. We're going to fill a couple of sp spots where, you know, maybe we had a couple of guys that weren't willing to do that, and we're going to we're going to fill those spots with a couple of guys. And and I believe I have the 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 um, the vision to see what we need and what we don't need to fill those holes in order to get us to where we want to be. So now you can go to a guy, a recruit, says, you, you've got some hockey dreams. Let me just tell you, last year we had 12 players from here that graduated into higher leagues, and if you want to do something like that and you want to come here and make a difference, this is the opportunity, and that's going to attract talent. It, it does, and, and, and like I said, I've been... I've been involved in these leagues for a long time, and I've been in and out of different places. And 
hockey players know where they want to be. And, and if you have a guy who has some decent talent and he wants a place to play and he's looking for a place to play, you know, the guys know they do the research on, on the coaches and, and who's going to help them and who's not. Mm. And, and once that word gets around, it's kind of a little bit, you know, basic a, about what you're, what you're trying to do. Okay. Let me go through a couple players. Igor Karloff. Karloff. Now, he's a bit of a heartthrob out there. He's got his own cheering section. Uh, for, those, for those ladies that are watching, he'll eventually go out to TK's afterwards or whatever the, uh, the place is. He's a bit of the heartthrob. But he's a goal scorer. I mean, he seems to be one of the core guys on the team. He's a very, very skilled uh, player. Uh -huh. um, you know, we, we had an opportunity to, uh, you know, at the end of last season after our playoffs to get him called up. Um, you know, for, sh for a short time. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't get a chance to go because things didn't work out too well after the season was over for him. So he's going to be called up to where? To the East Coast Hockey League, okay, to the okay. Elmira Jackals. Now, um, do you have a team that you're the minor league team for? We, d we did not last year. We're, right now we're in the process of negotiating uh, with the Elmira Jackals of the East Coast Hockey League okay. um, to try and get that affiliation uh, nailed down for this season right. um, because the head coach of the, the, the new head coach of the Elmira Jackals now is one of my best friends named Pat Bingham who coached in Bridgeport last year for the Sound Tigers. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, he lost his, uh, his job there in, in Bridgeport due to uh, New York Islanders coaches shake up. Okay. Um, so he got the Islanders head are all shaking up. Yeah, I mean they're, they're living off those four cups yeah. a, a long time. They're, now. they're working on it though. They got a they got a solid team down there. They got a lot of uh, they have a lot of uh, prospects that are that are, are really really good prospects. Would you sign a goalie for a 15 year contract? Isn't that what they did with the uh, DPH? Yeah, 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 they did. Yeah. I, I don't know what the what the, the problems was or what, whatever that was the status was of that. But actually, Jack Capuano, who's the coach and the the new coach of the Islanders there now, who was uh -huh. coaching in Bridgeport. Is actually another good friend of mine. Um, so you know, w with those relationships and stuff, you know, I have the ability to to get guys to where they want to be sometimes. All right, Corey Fulton. Now he's one of the rougher guys on the team. Yeah. He's not afraid to drop the gloves and go at it. Not afraid to fight at all. And he's going to be back. He is going to be back. All right, all right. Now he's going to be uh, one of those guys, like I said, and, and Corey did a lot of that last year. Uh, Corey's one of those guys who, who will, you know, if I tell him to go run his head through that wall over there, he'd probably go do it. Really? Sheetrock, Rock, Rick, it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. He will go, go right do it. And, and if he can't do it, he'll keep trying until he does. Okay. And okay. that's the kind of kid he is. And that's the kind of kid that wins championships. So. Now, you know, you have a certain coaching style. Al, I don't know if we have that. You, you give a particular <laughs> uh, uh, between period speech. Do we have that uh, queued up? What's that? Okay, let's do it. now. <laughs> but before we do, if there are small children uh, in the room, or or if there's any clergy watching, you may want to switch over to the, you know some other channel. Uh, small <laughs> children should leave if there's pets, animals. Uh, they should be safely secured because you're about to see Coach Phil Esposito in a between period uh, talk that would put make Bobby Knight uh, blush. Uh, if we can roll the tape, let's see what we got. Okay, we got to give him a minute. So we'll do. In hopefully, 30 seconds left. Hopefully you can't find it. Yeah, no, 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 we'll see. I'm telling you. I mean, if you've seen the movie Slapshot, this it's uh, it's you know somewhat comparable. Who let that. you guys in the locker room, anyways? I don't know. They, you know, I mean, <laughs> this is uh, the Danbury uh, Whalers hockey. They 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 let us in. We just pretty much act like we're in charge. You know, <laughs> you get a camera and a microphone, they'll let you in anywhere. Uh, but I want to talk to you a little bit about that. You know, it's interesting because I've gone to these games. There's kids everywhere. I loved it because it's like St. Pius the Fourth Church youth group is there. And the priests are there and all the kids are there and then you guys you know you're out there skating on the on the ice and all of a sudden you go to fighting and the priests are yelling get him get him and the kids are all wanting so they what, what, what about this? Help, help my viewing audience understand this idea that, you know, at any moment in one of these games, the, the gloves can get dropped and guys are bashing their head in and they're doing something on the ice that if they did it, you know, a, a foot over outside the rink, they would be arrested for assault or something like that. The most they get on the, you know, maybe a two-minute mine or maybe a five-minute fighting. But what, walk me through this idea of fighting as an integral part of the Danbury Hatters or, or the Danbury Whalers and, and, and uh, just hockey in general. Well, fighting has always been a part of hockey for forever. I mean, it's just one of those deals where it's one of the, what I believe that makes the game so exciting because you could be sitting there at the game, watching the game, having a hot dog, having a popcorn, having a beer, yeah. and then the next thing you know, the hot dog, the hot dog, and the popcorn and the beer are all over the floor because you <laughs> jumped up to watch this fight that was happening at center ice just yeah. out of the blue, for no reason. I mean, it was just—it's just one of those things that that makes the game so 
uh, interesting, and I, I believe it's like hockey's one of the best sports in the world, I believe. I mean, I, I don't know too many other sports. I mean, you have baseball players that, you know, I, I believe any sport where you could play two games in one day is just kind of a ridiculous. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's just. <laughs> my, bro my son, I have a 22 year old son who's played some hockey, too. We joke about pace baseball players getting injured. Yeah. And one guy pulled a muscle sneezing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's out for a couple, he's going to get his ribs MRI'd or something like that. But you look at hockey players and you see what these guys go through through the Stanley Cup playoffs, which I guess go 62 days yeah. and make it all the way. Yeah. And some of the things that I remember in Sports Illustrated, they had a, they had a picture of a guy and they kind of went by all the injuries and everything that they went through. Yeah. What is that about hockey players? They're just a little bit more tougher than some of the I, other sports? I think so because, I mean, it's one of those deals where, I mean, I, I've gotten gone in and if you look at my, my face in some different spots, you'll see that there's a lot of scars on it and things like that. <laughs> and I've gone in and had, you know, 10, 20 stitches put in my nose and come back out in 10 minutes and played again. That's the thing I love I too. You know, they, they, they get 20 stitches in, and they don't even miss a shift. I mean, I played a playoff game with a broken leg. With a broken leg. I had the small small bone in the bottom part of my leg broken, and I, I they taped it up, shot it with cortisone, and I played. Wow, this is a, this is what he does uh, between periods at the game. And again, if they're small children, <laughs> have them leave the room. Go right ahead. See, we can't turn. Down team, the Danbury Whalers. They're going to be going to war again tonight. It's great family entertainment for the whole family. Reasonably priced. You get to see great competitive hockey, great seats available. You got to come on down. But tonight on the Marty Heiser Show, formerly Ideas at Work and Beyond, we're going to take you in the locker room. You're going to meet these players up close and personal, and you're going to see one of the most competitive hockey you'll see in the entire New England states. This is Danbury Whaler Hockey. We're going to take you behind the scenes. Come and join us. here with the legendary coach of the Danbury Whalers, Chris Perola. Thanks for taking the Thank time. Thank you for having me. Hey, listen, this is your last game of the regular season. You're gearing up for the playoffs. You're playing the New York Aviators. What do you expect about, uh, about tonight's game? Well, I think it's uh, just going to be a prelim to what we're going to see next week. And I think both uh, both teams are going really hard. It's the last game of the season. We've seen them probably you know, 16 times this year. Um, we've certainly took it during the beginning of the year, and they've kind of uh, owned us the second part of the year here. But uh, you know, it's how you, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. So we're uh, just looking to uh, go hard, uh, make a statement today, um, stay healthy. I'm so sure they are too, and uh, get ready for next Friday night. Now, before the playoffs, at least in the NHL, they seem to want to make a statement. I see you have uh, um, uh, Corey Fulton in the in the lineup tonight. Sure uh, if, if it's going to get physical, are you ready for that? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, we've, we've played physical all year long. I think uh, where it's us and I think Akosasti, the two top teams as far as penalty minutes went all year long. And, uh, you know, certainly Corey was probably, uh, if anybody in the league, their most fear guy when it comes to, you know, just, uh, you know, policing the ice and the fighting part of it. But uh, I think, you know, like I said today, our goal was to go out there and play hard and, and do all, execute, do all the little things well, um, work on our game, get, get prepped for uh, next Friday. And, uh, you know, I'm sure it's going to be physical because there's always a lot of, uh, you know, tension between both teams. I mean, there's no, no loss you know, of love between both teams here. So uh, there's a lot of history. And, uh, and so I think that, uh, you know, as long as everybody stays healthy and gets through today's game, just, again, use this as an opportunity to prepare for what's going to happen next Friday. Well, I'll tell you, there's a packed house out there. It's really building. Uh, talking about Corey Fulton, he actually uh, had an added bonus last game. He actually scored a goal. Yeah, it was outstanding. I mean, the kids just uh, work so hard and just come come a long way. And uh, you know, I think that was his first goal of the year. And, you know, he's, he's a role player, right? So he's not there to score goals. But uh, to be able to see him do that and, and achieve that, this first pro hockey goal, uh, after all the all the work that he puts in day in and day out was, was great to see. Well, listen, we appreciate all this access, getting to see you talk in between periods, and uh, we'll be here, and good luck tonight. Thank, thank you. Thank Bye. you. Hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, 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 h
want this. You guys want to have nothing else except the W at the end of the day. There's nothing else you guys got to want. A W going into the playoff. Monday we start the playoff. We start practicing hard Monday for Friday, and we're going to do the same thing to them again next weekend that we do tonight. So set the tonight. I know it's been a long season, and I know a lot of guys on this team, you know, guys on the other team, and everybody wants to be buddy buddy out. It's one thing I can't stand is when you guys are talking to the other team in warm ups and joking around. So hopefully, you guys realize that that's right now because it's not happening ever. From tonight on, it's not happening again. Everyone. Another team has got to be your enemy, and you got to the boards and hurt them every. I don't he's your brother, your best friend. I don't know who he is. Every time you hit one of those guys, you got to want to hurt him. Now let's run. let's go out there. Let's get the game quickly. Thirty second shift, dump it in. Take the body, get off with, get everybody in the game right away, and let's take it to him. One. We need one tonight. We don't. Up the same way we did Akrasani last week. We don't. Up. I don't care if we run the score up to nothing. But well, let's tonight. And it's starting right now. All right. Come on, let's go. 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 It's not Little Leagues. Don't adjust your set. There's no problem with the audio on your set. There's just uh, periodic beeps. Now, you know, President Obama has said we need to, um, what is it, uh, win the future? Is that what it is? When, you know, WTF. And so you, you would have the same WTF except the you know, initials for something else in, in, <laughs> in those locker rooms. Now, you're talking about in, in between periods, right? you're saying you, know, you don't want guys. You might know them. They might be your brothers. But there's none of this fraternizing with the other team. There's none of this buddy-buddy thing in hockey. How's that work? I, I just, I, I've always been to the, I've always had the, the attitude that when I'm playing a game that the guys that are wearing the other colored jerseys are guys who I want to kill. I mean, those are guys I want to hurt. Those are guys I, I want to beat. And, and that's the way it is. And, and it's unfortunate. I've been in many situations in my career, too, where I, I've been a roommate to somebody and he got traded to the other team and we happened to be playing that team that night. And, and we've gotten into, you know, I had a roommate we had to, I had a fight with I, who I was sleeping in the same apartment with a couple of days before that. So it's just one of those deals. I mean, what happens on the ice stays on the ice and when the ice is, the game is over, it's over and, and all is forgotten. There's actually a couple uh, different sets of brothers that played together and against each other in the NHL. There was Eric Lindros and his little brother, and they they almost went to blows. They had there was there was Eric Stahl and his brother. Uh, they, he he checked them when he was playing for the Rangers and knocked them out. There was that. There was the Souther brothers for years. They there all played against. They all played against each other, and they had many fights against each other. Yeah. And it's just one of those deals where you know you have to want to you have to want to beat the guy that you're playing against, yeah. no matter who it is. Now, but even I mean e even so, we were talking about this earlier. With the with the fighting and how if you had if you had fights if you if you went on the ice uh, and you did that off the ice you'd be arrested uh, but somehow there's a, there's sort of a self-regulating uh, condition within among the hockey players that it doesn't get too out of hand. Uh, caller, are you there? Yes. Hi, my name is Steve. I'm from Brooklyn, and um, I live right by the Aviators. And I was wondering, uh, Coach Esposito. What, what do you, when you played, when you used to play back in the EPHL days, you were, a, you were a tough guy. And I was wondering, was there anything that you're going to do to the Whalers to make them tougher so that you can possibly compete with the Aviators? Thank, thanks, for, thanks for the question. It's a good question. Um, I guess I wasn't an aviator fan, but he does say you're a, you're a tough guy. And he's saying what you're going to And by the way, it was interesting because I, I was doing some reading about you. <laughs> and here's, here's just what uh, one person said about you. It's good to see a complete lunatic is behind the bench at Lat. At least uh, Danbury will be tough again next year. I hope that the other 8 to 23 teams in the league next year get it and load up on toughness. There seems to be this uh, anticipation that if you coach – and you recruit like you played, there's going to be some toughness here. Well, I, I, that's, you know, one of the goals. I mean, you can't have a whole team of, of, of guys that play like that because you, you won't win hockey games. You have to have a, a happy medium of skill plus tough guys. And, and a tough guy doesn't seem, doesn't have to be that, 
that typical guy that you see on, on, on TV that they call a goon and things like that and uh -huh. stuff. I mean, now that if you watch the NHL and things like that, there's guys who are very, very tough who can play the game, skate like the wind, and score goals. Yeah. Um, so it's those type of players that you know we, we need, and that's some of the players that we have. I mean, we have a couple of guys that can fill that role with um, you know Corey Fulton and Devin Guy and, and Chris Clark as a defenseman and things like that. And we're going we're gonna to add a couple. Uh, Paul Yarnot's another one, and hopefully if we can get him back. And we're but gonna even, add a even those guys you mentioned, they score goals too. Yeah. Call, are you there? Hi, what's up? Nothing much. We're talking hockey with uh, Phil Esposito. Not that Phil Esposito. This is our own Phil Esposito, and he's going to be oh, coaching. I, I figure Phil knows me very well. I have a cu couple of questions I want to answer real quick, Phil. Listen, you lose your best defenseman in Leland Fiddler. You lose arguably your best penalty killer in Lucas Shot, And then you lose a guy who can both score and put the throw the gloves down at Andrew Willock, 19 goals last year, and he was second in the league in penalty minutes. How do you replace the three guys? Thank you very much, Phil. Excellent question. This guy knows what he's talking about. And by the way, I mean, the fan base that you have in Danbury, these guys are these guys are avid fans. I mean, they got guys coming with old trasher jerseys. You know, I mean, this is this has been built up. These guys will be in the same seats every game, season tickets. I mean, these guys are committed, and they obviously know what they're talking about. That's what I said. They're they're the most knowledgeable fans around, and and they know their hockey, and they're 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 dedicated to the to the sport, and dedicated to Danbury. And this is like I said, this is one of the reasons why I think. That we have to get. All right, but what about now? You're, you're saying everything's great, everything's roses. We're going to win a championship. He's saying, hey, you got some holes. Well, we got What's some holes. What's your answer? We, for we that? got some holes, and we lost some players due to a uh, league deal where we can only protect a certain amount of players, and we lost a couple of players. Uh -huh. But right now, you know, it's June. Let's not worry about that until September. I mean, we're working on some things. We we may, we may make some deals, and you may see Leland Fiddler and Andy Willock and whoever else the other person was that he said, uh -huh. uh, Paul Yarnot, I think. You may see those guys back in Danbury. All right. Now, let's just talk turkey here a little bit. There were, the original owner of this team was a guy named Galanti, and uh, he had a little bit of trouble with some issues, and he's no longer with us for right now, but he poured a lot of money into this team, right? Not, we were just looking at the locker room. And well, he didn't put a lot of money into the team. He put a lot of money into the, the locker room and into the Danbury Trashers team that he owned. Right. Um, that was, you know, when he had started this this program, he, he redid the, the Danbury Ice Arena. He added on the locker rooms and all those uh, luxury skyboxes that are there. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he was the one who was instrumental in paying and getting all that done. I mean, so a lot of this, this Danbury Whalers, Danbury Trashers, all this Danbury hockey stuff started from, right. from Jimmy Galante. So, and, but do, and do he's we have, instrumental do we in, in getting hockey in Danbury, and, and he, he did an unbelievable job yeah, in and what he did. And his son was continuing to run the team and yes. heralded and the beloved team. Yep. Now, do we have the same kind of guy that's putting money into this program now? And, we, and, and we, if we need the player, we can go out and get him. A George Steinbrenner, if you will. We have yes, we have we have two owners that are dedicated in to, to 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 making Danbury a positive, um, you know, positive uh, cash flow team type thing. Uh -huh. But and that's a big thing. I mean, you have to understand at the end of the day, this is this is the uh, a business still too. I mean, the Danbury Whalers team is a business. Um, you know, if we lose money and things in that state, in that st sense, then we're not going to be here very long. So we have to be careful in what we do, and we have to try and you know toe the line in between, you know, making sensible business decisions with players and salaries and things like that, and, and keeping the bottom line where it needs to be. I mean, we, we want to keep this thing going. We want to we want to keep building, mm -hmm. and if we can get if we can get up to the point where I think the Danbury Arena holds 2,500 people, if we can get 2,500 season tickets, then we you know we don't have that problem with going out. And spending money to get, you know, but we got to take baby steps. It's a new league. We got to be careful. But you know, I, I think with the ownership that we have, and then, you know, like I said, with me now being the coach and and stuff, I think we can we can get that happy medium where we need to be. Get a good team, get a good product on the ice, get a good team on the ice, and and do some damage. All right. Now listen, in your mind's eye, and if I'm getting too personal, just you know, punch me in the head because you probably could. <laughs> but uh, are you looking at this as a long-term commitment? I mean, do you have a three-year plan, a five-year plan, or if if the phone rings and one of these uh, bigger leagues give you a call and say, hey, we'd like you to come up. Are you out of here or what's your plan? I, I, you can I, be honest. We have a very uh, compelling viewing audience. They can see right through you if you're not telling the truth. I'm going I'm to sit here and tell you I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to lie. I'm not, I'm not, I, I, I'm starting here. This is my starting point now. I did right. this when I was a player and, uh, you know, I had a starting point and, and this is my starting point now is coaching. Um, you know, I, would I like to stay in Danbury and, and be here for a few years in order to get my resume, you know, uh, potential uh, uh, higher leagues and stuff interested in me, yes. And, and if I did get an opportunity to go coach at a higher league, I mean, it would have to be the right place and, and the right 
uh, scenario for me, and 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 then I would, uh, you know, I would t I would take a hard look at it, uh -huh. um, you know. And but this is the reason why I played. I played to move up and get as high as I possibly can, mm -hmm. and you can't expect me not to change my ways now as being a coach. Uh -huh. I mean, would I like to be uh, a coach in the National Hockey League at some point? Yes. And that's what that's what you're. I mean, that that is your career goal. That's what you're doing. This isn't a hobby for you. You're looking to make your bones here and bring a championship to Danbury. Is that right? Yes. And the more championships you win, the higher you get. All right. Now, uh, you know, we had we just had the Stanley Cup and the uh, goalie for the uh, Boston Bruins, Tim Thomas. Yes. Now he's a he's an American. American and, uh, born. Had, had a, a similar situation to you. Journeyman had a lot of t a lot of uh, games in the minor league, and he just hoisted the cup, so it can be done. Uh, call, are you there? Call, are you there? Hello? Yes, are you calling uh, the TV show? Hold on, it's my wife. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, 2%? Okay, the cottage cheese with the... Okay, honey, I'll, I'll, I'm on TV, honey. I got to... No, I'm sorry. Are you there? Yes. Go ahead. I was joking about the milk. Do you have a question for the coach? Yes, I do. Now's your big chance. We'll just sit here and wait until you ask your question. Go ahead. I would like to ask Espo what he plans to bring um, for the season and what everyone should be looking forward to. Good question. What about that? And now, by the way, your announcement, where did they hold that? Um, at TK's. TK's was like over It was supposed people. to be at uh, first and 10, but due to a bad storm slash uh -huh. slight tornado, all the power went out at first <laughs> and 10. Okay. And then they had to pull a, uh, a Facebook uh, announcement to change it to TK's at the last minute. Okay. And that's where it was. And now yes, is it was true? Is it true that there were spontaneous chants of Espo, Espo that, that sprung out at TK's? Is that true? Yes. All right. That's what I So what is, how does that make you feel? I, I, like I said, I, I've been around Danbury for a while now, and, I, and the fans here are unbelievable. They've always supported me when I was playing. They, they supported me last year as the assistant coach here under Chris, and, and, uh, and now they're supporting me now as, a, as the head coach, and I'm not about to let them down. So. And not only that, but you are a product of Connecticut youth hockey. You played your youth hockey at East Haven, was it? Yeah, I played in East Haven youth hockey. Then you went to some swank prep school and played hockey there? In Salisbury, Salisbury School in Litchfield, Connecticut. All right, and then, but again, Connecticut, then you went on to West Point and went on from there. But what about the question from the, uh, from the caller? What kind of hockey are you, what, what can they expect? That's a good question. And sorry I snapped at you. I have a, I've had a lot of coffee tonight. The, it's, what they can expect is is they're going to be um, they're going to be uh, excited, and we're going to have you know we're, we're going to fill that building on, uh, on on the home opener in, in October. There, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're going to try and Herm does a really good job. Our owner at, at doing all these different things. You talked about priests and churches and things like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, very big on. I the mean, our, our 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 Herm there, the guy who who runs our team and is the owner of our team. He, he does a very good job in recruiting and doing those promotions in order to get people into the, the arena. And we're going to try and fill the building. And as long as the building's filled, and, and we're going to have a, a, a solid um, offensive-minded team, we're going to have the, probably the best one-two goal, co goalie combination in the league yeah. with Nick Niedert and, uh, and uh, Peter Vetri. Uh, this year, and uh, Peter's going to be here, you know, full time. Uh, he, last year, he was kind of on and off because he was still in school. Uh -huh. So um, he's going to be here full time with Nikki Nieder. We're going to have, like I said, the best goaltending combination in the league, and we're going to play good defensively. And I think all the fans are going to be very surprised what they when's see. On, the, when's on the, the first game? It's, uh, I believe, it's sometime around Halloween. I believe it's October 31st or October something like 31st. that. October 31st. And how many home games are there? Uh, last year, I think last year we wound up playing uh, 50 or 60 games. I think 30 are home and 30 wow. are away, something like that. Wow. You know, I remember when uh, the Danbury Hatters just started, you had uh, Mayor Bowden came out and dropped the first puck. And we are being joined by State Representative Dan Carter. Dan, thank you so much thank for you. joining us. Phil. Dan, this is Phil Esposito. Welcome to Danbury. Thank yeah. you, sir. By officially, uh, head officially. Head. been here for a while. I've been here for a few, a few years. Yeah, and I just want to say the economic impact, and maybe you can talk to this a little bit, but the economic impact of having a minor league hockey team here, what it does to revitalize downtown Danbury and bring people in is just incredible. And uh, Dan's going to give us a little update about what's going on in Hartford as well. But uh, what has the impact of uh, the Danbury Whalers been from your point of view? Well, obviously, uh, you know, anything that brings, uh, brings people back into downtown and revitalize the area yeah. is great. And I think having somebody like yourself come over and, uh, 
you know, pass the baton, you know, a new head coach. I think that that's a great opportunity for us to make some noise about what you bring to the city because uh, I'm sure Mayor Bowden's excited about it. Has he come out yeah. and done it? You see, he threw out the first puck this last game? Yeah. Of this season? Yeah, he, he the first dropped game. the first puck, Dro man. You don't throw that's out right, the first puck. That's right, you drop the first puck. <laughs> you drop a puck, that's right. you throw that. Sorry, I didn't mean to drop <laughs> anybody. That, that's okay. No. <laughs> hey, actually, I have two questions for you. Okay. You played for Black Knights, right, Army? Yes. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. I, I, I am an Air Force uh, Academy uh, representative and an Air Force guy, but okay. but I still love that you were you were helping those guys out. And were you in Dayton as well? Yeah, Dayton uh, Bombers. I played for down there okay. in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, my, my hometown. Okay. <laughs> so uh, when I was when I was it's looking, a small world. Back, it is a small <laughs> world. I was really excited when I heard that about you. But you know, um, having the opportunity to have a team like this uh, yeah. right here in downtown Danbury is pretty amazing. Because you know, right now we're looking for anything we can in this area to bring, you know, bring people in, you know, get them to visit our businesses. You know, we have a great downtown area, as you know, yeah. you know, for uh, for the restaurants, and I think you guys house offer, theaters coming house back. House theater, yeah. I think you guys offer a lot, so I'm really excited to hear about it. And when I heard you were going to be here tonight, I want to make sure I popped in to say hello. Well, thank you. He's given us he's given us our update from uh, from Hartford. Can you see? Can, can you? You're, you're I would love to hear the update I, from I, that, Hartford. That, that, exactly right. You know, because right. I still have to pay tax in the state. Oh, you're going to have to pay oh. a little bit more. Uh, if Dan doesn't help out, you know, you sent me that uh, video clip of you know what we're up against, and we played that last week. Oh, did you? Yeah, we played it. You know, all the concessions okay. from the unions and stuff like that. But give us the latest. What's the latest? What's well, going on in Hartford? You know, wouldn't it be? By, by the way, just yeah. a thought, passing thought, and then sure. I'll shut up. But you know, in hockey. When things get really heated, at some point they just drop the gloves and fight. <laughs> now, have you ever considered that in the Capitol when you guys are arguing Democrats, Republicans? If you could just like, you know, go in a corner, have it out a little bit, wouldn't that sort of clear the air? A bit? Doesn't that happen in some countries? I think it does, like in Korea sometimes, and stuff, or Japan. Sometimes I wish it would. <laughs> yeah. There, there, there were, there were, listen, there were many nights when I was on the floor of the Capitol at you know one, two in the morning, and I'd listen to some of the stuff to be being said on the other side, and I just, I did. I wanted to drop my gloves. <laughs> <laughs> but, I think um, it would be refreshing. Yeah, you know, it, it would certainly get me in the news. <laughs> You'd be <laughs> surprised that. what you can accomplish when that happens. Yeah, yeah well, it clears the air. It really you know, does. I, I still have one more session to get through in my term, so you never know. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, from that aspect, it was really frustrating, obviously, when, when you see some things happening that you just don't agree with, and you put forth some really good ideas, mm -hmm. and you get them shot down just because I'm a Republican. But um, with that being said, you know, I made a lot of great relationships with people. I think that... Um, we have a shot in 2012 to make a lot of things happen because I, I don't know anybody who's happy about the direction of our state right now. Mm. And, and you say the latest, the thing that's surprising to me, and I would have never believed it, mm -hmm. is the fact that the union agreement has not been ratified. Um, as you know, one of the largest unions just shot it down, and right now it hinges on a vote tomorrow uh, really? with the corrections folks as to whether this, this agreement will go through. Mm. I have been saying somewhat publicly, I thought it would go through because it's a sweetheart deal. There's a lot of good things that are good for the unions in this in this uh, agreement. Right. If it doesn't go through, I'm going to be surprised. But uh, if it doesn't, it sounds like we're going to be called back into session within the next week uh, to start figuring out what the backup plan is. <laughs> so, so, I mean, in, in broad in broad brush, yeah. the idea is that the new governor was going to come in and say, <clears throat> yes, we're going to raise taxes because we need two times a rough and, you know, you guys aren't paying enough in taxes, so we got to raise taxes. But wait a minute, we're going to have some concession <clears throat> from these big, you know, expense centers in the state, the unions yeah. and what have you. I know these guys, we've worked it out, there's going to be real great concessions, but you're saying that part of it's not happening necessarily, but the tax is going up, sure is. Well, th there's, a couple, there's a couple of big things that most of have heard about that I think are happening. Um, number one, we had more surplus in this budget than anybody wanted to talk about. And I think you're going to hear more about that in the near future. I uh -huh. think this, uh, in fact, tomorrow, there's a, some sort of finance meeting where they're going to uh, come forth with new numbers with the revenue estimates. Uh -huh. I expect those will be higher than what we projected. So now, with that being said, okay. we have more money, and yet they raise taxes anyway. Yeah. That's the first thing. The second thing that's happened is in this union deal, uh, there was a lot of funny money. And, and the reason I say funny money is there was one part of this where they know they budgeted for about 180 to $190 million by creating an employee suggestion box. <laughs> and what they were going to do is get all these great ideas that were going to uh -huh. save money. Uh, the other thing was having a healthier workforce. Mm -hmm. uh, those two together the tune of about $566 million. Now, obviously, these are things that you really look at and you wonder, well, are we really going to budget on that? 
Um, right. So those are issues, and uh, among others, among others. So, you know, where we stand now, I think we're going to have to wait to see what happens with this union agreement. Right. Um, a lot rides on that. If uh, if it doesn't get ratified tomorrow, the governor is going to be in a pickle. He's going to have to come back with some sort of backup plan. He claims he's going to lay off workers. We'll right. see what happens. Hold that point. Phil, I want to thank you so much for coming in. If people are interested in uh, getting tickets or, or doing anything, not that we're selling anything, we're not. This is purely public information. But there's a website for uh, the Danbury Whalers hockey team. There it is, danburywhalers.com. First game is uh, towards the end of October, and uh, we're looking forward to great things. Well, that, and yes, thank you very much for having me here. We have a uh, free agent camp coming up this weekend, June 24th and 25th, which is Friday and Saturday. Uh, down at the Danbury Arena. We're going to be there Friday uh, until 6 o'clock uh, at night. And then Saturday we're going to be there all day. And then we have our, our annual All-Star Game Saturday night, which is... Uh, this coming? This Saturday night. Okay. We're going to have a rookie All-Star Game of all the, all the... We have 45 kids coming into town tomorrow. Um, and the All-Star Game is going to be uh, Saturday night at 7 o'clock. So wow, it's right going to be Denver. right in the Danbury Arena. So it's going to be something for people to come and watch and, uh, and get a little hockey fix in June. And that's good. Uh, Carl, are you there? Go right ahead. Great episode so far. I was wondering, uh, you know, you did a great job with Phil, and now you have uh, Dan on. What the heck does this have to do with hockey? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, the caller brings up a good point. Uh, we try to be very eclectic here, and we're going to take a break, and we're going to give you your uh, your full due. But thank you very much for coming in. Thank you for Appreciate having me. Appreciate it. Danbury, Danbury uh, Whaler Hockey. Come out and see it. It's, uh, it's worth it. And we're going to take a break, and we're going to wrap up with Dan Carter. Thanks again for coming in. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay.